Hi, I'm Bill Arnold. Thank you for listening to this podcast. There are many more podcasts available at MyFaithRadio.com. Your support makes this possible. Thank you. And a warm welcome to the afternoon show. I'm Bill Arnold, and I'm looking forward to what's ahead for us. I'm glad that you were able to join me today. Hope you had a great weekend. As you know, uh, the Advent season started yesterday. Patrick and I are going to chat about that a little bit. But before I bring him on, I also want to let you know the Monday afternoon mix is going to follow with Pastor David Miles and Wyatt. And then Ken Samples, who's not only a professor but a theologian, is going to be an hour or two. You might be wondering... He's a pretty smart guy. What is he talking about this time? And let me give you a heads up. He's going to talk about how did the human mind come to be? He's so out of my league, I don't even know where to begin with that. But this is why it's always fun to start with Patrick, because I know where I, where I can begin with him. So here's Patrick, <laughs> whom I haven't spoken to in a week since his Chicago Bears defeated my Minnesota Vikings. Well, the arrangement yep, well, was now, if... Go ahead, yeah, Patrick. Yeah. I was going to say, to be fair... Your team lost, so you weren't speaking to me, but we did make an arrangement that if the Bears lost, that I would not be speaking to you. So, And if the Vikings won, I wouldn't speak to you. So what happened? Well, it's a bye week. I guess it's a bye week. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so we're, we're willing to we're, talk to each other this week. You know what? My, well, here's the thing. My Chicago Bears are pretty bad. In fact, even though it's a bye week, I'm pretty sure if I check the scores, they lost anyway. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> that's kind of mean. That's they're so bad that they can't even win correctly. What does that mean? Well, they beat your team, which of course destroyed their opportunity to actually get some talented players next year. Because it's just one of those things you say, okay, you're a losing team. Embrace the fact that you're not very good, but use it as a springboard to uh, get some draft picks, some good talent next year, so that you can improve. And instead. They work really hard to win just enough games so that they don't get any good players next year. <laughs> that is that is the skill the Chicago Bears have had um, you know, forever, and they've they've turned many a good quarterback into a Chicago Bear quarterback, as we all know. <laughs> they they could have drafted Patrick Mahomes, and had they done it, we were we would have never heard of the guy. He would be retired right now selling real estate in Phoenix, saying, I get it. <laughs> that football thing just did. I guess I just wasn't that good. <laughs> right, right. So, so here we are. We are starting the celebration of Advent, and Advent is Latin for Aventus, and Aventus means coming. So we know what's coming, which is the birth of our Savior, celebrating that. But the celebration yeah. of Ad Advent takes place on the, the four Sundays prior to Christmas, and they each mm -hmm. follow a weekly theme. Yesterday was hope. Next Sunday is peace, then joy, then love. I'd say those are four outstanding things to be thinking about in the month of December. Yeah, I, th I think it, that kind of that covers all the bases. Now, did you ever have the the uh, like the Advent wreath that had the fifth candle in the middle? And there was discussion over: Does that mean repentance? Does that signify the purity of Christ? Um, I don't remember we, that. Yeah, we sometimes we'd be at somebody's house and they'd have there'd another candle in the middle, and I don't know if that was just to offset the other four, but people would maybe maybe the listeners know or they've had that experience, but there there was sometimes I would see a fifth candle and it meant something. I was used to the four. Okay. And and of course the uh, the advent calendar, the lovely advent. Did you ever have the one with the coins, the quarters? No, I don't remember that. Hey, wait, I'm sorry. That was the March of Dimes one. <laughs> That's a different, <laughs> different, different... You're mixing up your calendars, Patrick. This, but yes, it was the chocolates, right? You got the chocolates. You got the chocolates, yeah. I remember that. Boy, did that ever teach you discipline? One chocolate a day to a child. That's well... That taught you. That did, that was. So the, ad, the Advent season, if you celebrate it, and a lot of people do and some don't, but I think it's a mm -hmm. lovely time to reflect on how we can prepare our hearts and, and, mm -hmm. our, and, and our homes for Christ's birth. Um, 
so it's really a time for not only our families, but our, our faith communities to remember through not only prayer and reflections, and maybe you play some special music in your home, and and you focus on the true meaning of the birth of Jesus, which is what we're focusing on all month. Now, to the contrary, there's a lot of people that have a very different approach to Christmas, and they worry themselves crazy trying to get all kinds of shopping done and all kinds of holiday parties attended to and everything else. So um, wh- yeah. what, do you, what do you and your family do in terms of uh, this season? You know, it's interesting. We, it's, it's getting a little bit easier as the kids are a little bit older because um, you're not having to shop to your drop. You know, it's here's 50 bucks. Enjoy yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, But um, it's, uh, you know, like I, I, my mother tomorrow is nine years since my mother died. And so um, Chicago, after my mother passed away, we we used to try and, you know, get in a a trip to Chicago. So we don't do that as much because a lot of the family after my mother died, you know, they they went to different places. And so people are, are in so many different places that we're not meeting as a family as much anymore. It's taken some of that extra stress off. I always struggle. You know, I, I have I have a hard time relaxing during Christmas. I always feel like there's so much to be done. Uh, no matter what arrangement that my wife and I make, you know, OK, let's put a budget on this year. Let's not go crazy. You know, and should seventy will seventy five dollars cover you know, <laughs> your list, mm-hmm. and then you know, we end up doing it every year. And I think I stress out more from that because I think, could we really just say to ourselves when you're no really let's really really take it easy this year and make the holidays about us getting together. We can buy the kids a bunch of stuff, mm-hmm. but let's just not go crazy with each other. We don't have to do that. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if we, if we still, if there's still some sense of, I don't know, you say you don't want much, but if I don't deliver it, you know, I worry, is, is it going to be, you know, then there was 2023, the Christmas of 2023. Yeah, right. You didn't yeah. get me anything. You know? Yeah. Yeah. They, you don't be, want, want to be remembered that way. You have, you have my curiosity up when you talked about the fifth candle. I've been thinking about that ever since you brought that up and I'm trying to think of the significance of the wreath and the candles. I think the first one was representing Isaiah and the prophets that would predict the coming of Jesus. And I think the second one was representing the word of God. And the third was representing the Mary, the the mother of Jesus. And the fourth would be, I think it's John the Baptist that who would be telling the people of Israel to get ready for Jesus uh, and his teaching. The fifth, I know, was to be lit on, I think, Christmas Day, obviously signifying the birth of Christ, you would think, right? That would, that would make perfect sense, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I didn't, I've didn't. I've seen the four and I've seen the five. Yeah. Now, I know there's some yeah. uh, Orthodox churches that they will use an, uh, the Advent wreath and, and have colors associated with. Uh, so it's a very pretty wreath. I don't know if, you're, if you remember your wreath having colors. I think... The uh, faith was for green, and and uh, that blue was for hope, and gold was for love. I don't know. Do you remember? Those? I remember lots of. Uh, I, you know, I don't remember the different. Co- I remember purple. I remember some purple candles. Royalty. And if I saw royalty, and yep. if it was white in the middle, I think that's why the the fifth one was Christ and purity because it was pure white. Uh, but I remember some purple ones, but I don't remember green. That's interesting. So that's just different. Um, I, I, I don't know which, who did you say does the, uh, the various colors? Uh, well, the, Orthodox churches. Yeah. Those guys. Those guys. Yeah. 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 Now, now you've got me curious too, as to why the treat filled, uh, calendars. Why, why that? I don't know anything oh, about that. I don't, did you ever get one? I must've, but I, but I think I would go through a week at a time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I was pretty much, you know, I had Advent done by the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm way ahead of you guys because you, you couldn't help yourself, right? How do you, you know? It's and it was good chocolate. Yeah, it was always that we it was just wasn't you know your basic chocolate bar. There was something special about the chocolate in there. I think it was the amount of work you had to do to get it because those windows, those in little that, doors, those houses, with the perforated yeah, the little perforated houses. 
very difficult to open without destroying the product behind the door. Exactly. And and I'm not, I'm not going to complain about a broken chocolate, but an intact chocolate tastes better. Yeah. Ask couldn't, anybody. Yeah. No, I yeah. couldn't agree more. Couldn't yeah. agree more. So what about what about some of your holiday traditions? I, I know that you've got one of the largest placemat collections in the world. Yeah, this is so there are there are a couple of things. My wife and I, I, I always say we easily have the world's largest placemat collection. So uh, she says, no, no, we don't. And, but she has them. It seems like I, I, I'm pretty sure we have Arbor Day placemats. I think Canadian, <laughs> some Canadian Flag Day. Which is interesting because I don't even know where to get good Canadian Flag Day plas- placemats. Yeah, you know, ever since a lot of that stuff started getting made in China, they don't honor the same days that we do, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's, it, it, I mean, God, we had um, Halloween ones. And you know, when the day after Halloween, then the Thanksgiving ones go out. And then then there's ones that they aren't Christmas. Uh, they're called winter. Oh. Then we have the winter placemats. Now, and, and she has a multi, multi-layer placemat system. So often she gets these very fancy placemats that have holes in them. They're perforations. They're like just decorative. Let's say it's like, it looks like a giant snowflake. Is that the placemat well, that the placemat goes on? Well, then you have or is to put that a little rubber? Placement. Oh, no. Yeah, it's a little kind of rubbery one, but you put the cloth placement underneath that placement. Then you put a plate that you cannot eat off of on top of the second placement that's kind of a lacy thing. <laughs> and I said, so I went to put food on, on one of these ones. She says, no, 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 you can't eat off of that. Oh, that's a big said, no, it's no. A, She said, that's a plate. I, I said, it's a plate. She says, no, that's a charger. A what? I said, a, it's called a charger. I don't know that? this stuff. Yeah, clearly. That, that's the, Can yeah. someone explain so said, that, please? The plate that you well, can't put food on. 877-933-2484. I want to get an answer to this, Patrick. I know there's someone a lot smarter than us that will tell us. Well, I do have some of it. I have some of the answer because I remember asking her, I said, what is the point of the charger? She said, to keep the food off the placemats from falling and spilling on the placemats. Okay, so what's the point of the placemats? It's to keep the food from spilling on the tablecloth. I said, what is the point of the tablecloth? To keep the food from spilling on the table. Why don't we just eat off of our laps? What if we, we have all these multi... So you have a protective cloth to, so you don't ruin the table. Then you got to put a thing on top of a cloth to protect the cloth. Then you got to put a thing on top of the placemat to protect the placemat that's protecting the cloth that's protecting the table. Were this you aware like, that's what all that stuff was for? No, I was not aware of that. I was not aware of that. And then when, why don't you yeah, just when, eat, yeah, eat on TV trays around the, around the TV? Uh, who doesn't like a hungry a Swanson hungry man, <laughs> mostly white meat turkey dinner for Thanksgiving? <laughs> exactly. That's my exact point, it's, Patrick. It's easy to clean up, and it comes with that cherry compote, which I still don't know what compote is. Nah, I think you're better off not asking. It's some yeah. cherry-flavored food product that you can't identify exactly what it is. You can't, yeah, you cannot identify it, but, yeah. you know. There was something magical about putting those things in the oven. <laughs> uh, All right, we're so taking anyway, a break. We, oh, go we, ahead. Yeah. Finish your thoughts. No, I, I don't say, want to cut, no, cut just, you off. No, no, I'm just saying we've, we have our – all of our tables are protected with the world's largest placemat collection. Okay. That's, that's all uh, I wanted to say. That's a lot of covering for that table. It must be a very valuable table. No, nope. yeah. it's not that nice. <laughs> right, we'll be back with more of Patrick Albanese in just a minute. Uh, if you do have an answer or other input to the charger plate, we would love to get more information on that. 877-933-2484. You can make a couple of guys who aren't that smart feel smarter. We'll be right back. Oh, there's so much sadness and desperation and loneliness, especially at Christmas time. It seems to me that there is almost like a big magnifying glass on the world and we see problems just magnified and we see people in their desperate situations almost worse than ever. 
But there is something we can do about it. And when we think of the story of Jesus, that is the story of hope. And if you have a story to tell and you can give hope to someone this year by sharing their story, we want you to do it. You can go do that at myfaithradio.com. I encourage you to do it. I'm back with Patrick Albanese, my friend and colleague from the great state of Iowa and the uh, prestigious town of West Des Moines. I've got a couple of comments that have come in, uh, Patrick. This is very helpful. Let's see. I believe the okay. fifth candle in the center is the Christ candle, and is it is lit on either Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. Yes, we okay. had a white candle in the middle of the Advent wreath, and we lit it on Christmas Day to signify Christ's birth. Um so it's and then the charger plate it's decorative it goes on the place the placemat and to protect the placemat which protects the tablecloth which protects the table let's just admit it <laughs> all right <laughs> and compote is fruit cooked down with sugar made into a topping for waffles and pancakes laugh out loud wow yeah it works for so me you take a you take a sugar product and you add sugar <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that actually how it works? Get, that's how you get dessert. Yeah. You, I mean, think of think of the cereals that that we used to consume. It was you know super sugar crisp. Yeah, and it was sugar frosted flakes. Oh, you I know. know. I mean, it was almost like and, they said, "Hey, we're going to help you out here. That's got sugar in it." <laughs> and you you weren't opposed to sprinkling some additional sugar on top of your sugar flakes, just so you know. No, no, not at all. It was, it was, it was quite a delight. And if you decided to take a break from the normal breakfast routine of cereal, uh, did you ever do bananas and milk? <laughs> what did you add to the bananas and milk? No, I never did bananas and milk. Oh, slice up some bananas and some milk, and then, do and then you throw a little, you throw some sugar on it. <laughs> oh, I did cinnamon sugar toast. So a little white toast, and you put a lot of butter on it, and then you sprinkle uh, uh, cinnamon, and then a lot of white sugar. Yes, yeah. uh, and they now they make that sugar cinnamon stuff uh, as a uh, side product that you know, so you don't have to have two containers. Oh, okay, that makes you, sense. Yeah, yeah, they make an all-in-one container for that right now. Hmm. But I, I loved cinnamon toast, sugar cinnamon toast. Well, of course you do. Yeah, everything had everything had sugar in the name: sugar frosted flakes, sugar. sugar. Then they fired Sugar Bear, <laughs> Tony the Tiger. <laughs> Tony hung on to his job, but they said, well, how, do, how do we, we can't just change his name to Bear. His name is Sugar Bear. Yeah, we got to we gotta get rid of Sugar Bear. Yeah, because sugar is bad now. So uh, we're just going to call it Super Crisps. I, th- I don't even know what they call it anymore. I don't know yeah. if they changed the formula. They just said, can't have sugar in the name anymore. Which is so interesting so, when, when you see dentists that say four out of five dentists recommend this. I think the other one's driving a Mercedes. He's, he is... Like, you know, I think of, I'm one of eight kids, four of us had braces, but all of us probably should have, uh, but we drew straws. So I was one of the lucky ones. (laughs) And, uh, (laughs) but I, I would sometimes look at the nice car in the parking lot every time I went to my orthodontic appointment. And I think I'm pretty sure the Albanese family paid for that car. (laughs) Four of us have been coming here. You know, I made the, I did. Did you ever do braces as a kid? No, I didn't. So th- this is how something can stick with you uh, for a long time. Uh, back when you were a kid, they would take a, a clay mold of your teeth to see you, you know, how to make the adjustments. And they had to stick this thing in your mouth. It was quite uncomfortable when I'm, I don't know, 11 years old. And uh, I start gagging on the thing. And <laughs> I, bit, I bit down pretty hard on the orthodontist's finger. For four years, every time I walked in the door, he's like, the biter. Oh, <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> the biter is here. Oh, like, that's Cut dramatic. me some slack. Yeah. I was gonna, you were gagging me. You were choking me <laughs> with your, your clay mold in my mouth. I just reacted like a normal person would. And forever, I'm sure if I walked in there, I don't know if he's still around. His sons took over. I got a feeling my picture's on the wall with a caption underneath, The Biter. <laughs> oh, I bet. I am, I'm known as The Biter. I bet. All right, here's yeah. another breakfast of the Norwegian. 
and that's cream and brown sugar on a slice of bread. Wow. So it's not on toast, because I was thinking, wouldn't you, you pour cream on toast? That would make it soggy. It's just cream and brown sugar on a slice of bread. That doesn't, that doesn't well, sound horrible. No. So I haven't... Uh... My wife's family is Norwegian, and they have a lot of desserts. They call them desserts, and I don't really think they qualify because they don't—they aren't nearly sweet enough. Uh, there's nothing wrong with them, but I say that's that's kringla. That's not a dessert. Mm-hmm. That that is—it's a bread product. <laughs> it's fine, <laughs> mm-hmm. but you put that with the desserts, and you see those things over there that have frosting and chocolate. Those are desserts. This has none of that. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't qualify. I'm I'm very simple, but uh, I think I like that. If you put the brown sugar, was it brown sugar and cinnamon? Uh, cream no? and brown sugar on a slice of bread. Ooh, sounds pretty good, doesn't it? I yeah, I I kind of like this idea. Yeah, I've, maybe we'll have some new treats this year. Yeah, yeah, I like that. So anyway, I just yeah. want to continue to point people to these next four weeks. Yesterday, um, starting our Christmas season, we, you know, Advent, if you celebrate Advent, not a lot of people do. A lot of people still do. That means a whole lot to them. But I, I love uh, as we start to get our minds in the wrapped around what we're celebrating, which is the preparation and, and, and the anticipation of celebrating the birth of Jesus several thousand years ago. Um, and it's important that we... Keep the main thing the main thing. Yeah. Do, do you, um, I, mean, I like that. And, and maybe that'll be something I can focus on more this year. It'll help me prepare better for the holidays. I'm trying to be a little bit more relaxed about it. You know, I, I tend to have a lot of stress. Uh, I, I, I don't do well with crowds. Um, you know, I mean, it's one of the reasons why I liked performing on stage. I goes, you know what? I like to go to the theater, but I don't like crowds. What if I'm on stage? <laughs> you know, I'll mm-hmm. get there early. I don't have to deal with the crowd. And so I don't like just regular shopping when all this stuff is going on. I tend to stress out a little bit too much. But something happens to me, and it happens every year. After it's Christmas morning, we tend to do Christmas Eve at uh, the in-laws, and then we just have the little family gathering. The presents get opened early, and as soon as like all the wrapping paper is done, and I can just sit there, I finally get it. It's, it happens to me every year. The joy of Christmas, that's the moment it hits me. Um, I mean, I have some moments I could go, I could be in a very good mood because I got a lot of my shopping done. Let's say I actually have ordered an item already, which is yeah, I know. You're thinking it's the 4th, not the 24th. Yeah, I'm, who am I talking to right now? <laughs> yeah, I know. So what have you done with the regular guy? Right. But um, it, it, there's something about that moment uh, after all of that's done. I say, now what's Christmas about? Ah, mm-hmm. it's beautiful. Yeah. And uh, um, especially you know, got some great Christmas music on or uh, sometimes we often will go to like a Christmas Eve service but then we'll run a Christmas Day service in the house. Nice. Um, yeah, just to, there's some. It's kind of amazing. I don't know how often you've done this in your life, but when you go to church a couple days in a row, it really has a very positive effect on you. Mm, I agree. I agree. Yeah. yeah. So yesterday, uh, Advent focused on on hope, and next Sunday on peace, and I. I always go to one of my favorite verses on peace. This is John chapter 14, verse 27. Jesus says, Peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world gives. Do not be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. And I think of that verse, and I would encourage everyone to commit it to memory. I don't know what translation you like memorizing scripture, and I'm not entirely sure if that's NIV or not, but I do love the promise of that because when you are looking for peace in a troubled world, you shouldn't look for a worldly peace amidst worldly trouble. You should always look for heavenly peace uh, to combat worldly trouble because trouble, you need heavenly weapons to fight uh, earthly troubles. That's always been my feeling. So understand who God mm-hmm. is, trust him for who he is, and understand he is sovereign and he is our father and we can trust him, even though some of the circumstances may not be producing the kind of peace we want in our life. 
seek him for that peace and let his peace come upon you and realize that that is a gift right from heaven. He opens up heavens and just pours it out upon you. And if you feel troubled and are in need of some hope and peace, you're in the right month to be focusing on it. And try to spend as much time as you can this this week thinking about peace, trying to search scripture for as many verses on peace as you can, and just try to marinate all week in those peace verses. And I I, I bet at the end of the week, you're going to say, hey, I think uh, I got a little bit more peace. I I don't know how you could not. Uh, well, you know, uh, it's what, what goes in your mind, right? Yeah, it, it's so easy to focus on, you know, what is it you're, you're subject to something like 10,000 advertisements in a given day, and negative message upon negative message, not just in the advertisements, like, you know, you know, it, do you have bad breath, you know, for instance. Remember how they, it was everything, they just had you checking yourself out, saying, I'm, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a disaster. Yeah. But, um, you know, you can't watch the news anymore without saying, I'd like to be informed, but why is it I feel so angry or, uh, you know, uh, or depressed mm-hmm. after watching the news? And, and you, you have to come to grips with that it was written that way and it was presented that way. Uh, you know, it's, it seemed like when Walter Cronkite just came on and said, here's what's going on that you would say, okay, that's really bad stuff, but it's very emotional now. And so I think you have to counteract that. You, and it, you have to, you have to take the step. It's just not going to, ha- you know, I always say you, you got to plant the good stuff in your garden. The weeds show up. Mm-hmm. You never plant them. And you'd say, where did that come from? And it's taking over everything and it's choking out my good, pretty plants. I have to get rid of those. But if you want some pretty flowers in your garden, you have to put them there. And I think, like you say, if you're focusing on peace, say, every day, how could that not cultivate and grow into something that brings you more peace? I like that idea. Mm-hmm. And you know, I Hanging love, around these smart people has been good for you. It has been good for me, yeah. yeah. And I, I love Romans 12, uh, verse 18, that says, If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. So if possible, mm. as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Some people in your life don't want to live peaceably with you. And there's really a, not a lot you can do about that. But you can, um, as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with them and just try to live a peace, peaceful life. And as you think about peace this week, try to think about maybe someone in your life that you need to uh, extend the olive branch to. Maybe you need to forgive. Maybe you need to say, uh, I don't think we've been at peace and I'd like to be there with you and I want to I want to be responsible for my side of the street and just say I'm sorry and maybe that would be a good start this week as you prepare your heart for the second uh, Sunday of Advent coming up uh, this Sunday and we're going to focus on peace. I like it. I like yeah. it a lot. I think so, I can do that. I'm going to you know, grab some of yesterday's hope as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, as you should. <clears throat> a couple of yeah, yeah. more comments yeah, about about the food, uh, the let's see, it's the 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 cream and brown sugar on a slice of bread. Someone said it sounds like the rich man's milk toast. <laughs> uh, Rosella said we always had a separate shaker, one for yeah. cinnamon, one for sugar, and the other one was peanut butter and sugar it- on toast. Who wouldn't like who wouldn't like that? Oh boy! I used to do peanut butter and honey on toast. Oh, that's the yeah. That's so did Elvis. Um, another really yeah. Wow. He, peanut butter, what, uh, peanut butter, and banana <laughs> with <laughs> with honey. Oh yes, peanut butter, butter. Yes, yes, yes. That was it. That was the combo. The bananas. Yeah. You have a little bit of, yeah. and you could fry the bananas if you wanted crunchy. Um, yeah. The kids use Nutella, which I don't know if that existed. We had fluff. Did you ever have marshmallow fluff? I did have that, yeah. Did you do fluff and utters? No, I did never did. Did you ever did. do a fluff and utter sandwich? No, no, I never, you know I never heard of that. No, I haven't. Marshmallow fluff on one side, peanut butter on the other, and then you sandwich the thing together, and you pretty much have to get a tarp out to eat. <laughs> <laughs> it, is a mess. it sounds really messy. Really, really messy. It was delicious. All fluff right, and Patrick. Utter. On that note, I think we'll uh, call it a day. Have a wonderful week and keep your mind focused on peace this week. Search the scriptures for peace and have peace in your heart. And I'll talk to you next week. Thanks. Talk to you later.
You bet. Patrick Albanese has been my friend to get things started. Always love to start on a lighter note. A merry heart is like good medicine. We're going to take a short break, and then the Monday afternoon mix is next. It is time for the Monday afternoon mix with Pastor David Miles and Wyatt M. Gentlemen, welcome. Hello Thanks, there. Bill. So you hear that to... jazz? You hear that jazz, and it does uh, <laughs> kind of elevate the mood, doesn't it? It does, man. Bring you into the focus. I, I want to say today, let's focus on good, good news. We we get to celebrate the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ every week, every day at Faith Radio. But we also uh, do a lot of good in the body of Christ when we take time to encourage and help sustain the weary, because there's plenty of people right now, especially in this month, who are feeling a little weary. Yeah, you're right about that. I mean, like we've talked about um, how one of my very close friends was a police officer and, and talking with police and being in a chapel with police that sometimes the happy holidays aren't so happy. But um, as you were just noting earlier from that word from Isaiah 50, how the Lord wakens us morning by morning to give a word to sustain the weary. So, you know, of the basically 18.7 billion texts that are sent worldwide every day, you know, how Every about we... Day? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, billion? Is that what billion. you said? Did yep. you say billion? Billion. Wow. So for statistic bre- brain and tweet this, 18.7. Hmm. I mean, that, that's just a lot. Yeah, and probably s- 6 billion are done by uh, kids <laughs> who are 17. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of them that are done by kids, but they're also noting that a lot of um, people who aren't... Um, that age are sending a lot of texts as well. Mm-hmm. So, so it's kind of like a, a big major thing all around and that people are 10 times more likely to respond to a text than they will like email and phone calls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. wonder why that is. Why, why would someone not want to hear your voice and, 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 and hear the tone and hear a friendly voice and a laughter and all that? that that will be a little confusing for me for a while anyway. You you can kind of blame my generation for that as we've slowly gone into this new age, Bill. It's it's remarkable how people just are reliant on their technology. The, the yeah. face-to-face interaction, it's amazing just how that's dropped off. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I get it, Wyatt. All right, let's... Uh... David, let's uh, why let's talk about some of the, the various ways that, that you know we can brainstorm in order to be an encouragement to use some of the technology that Wyatt just described to serve the kingdom and to encourage people and to lift their spirits in this amazing month of December. Well, we can just we can start off like um, even coming out of Thanksgiving. I I had sent a text to a number of people and was really you know, amazed on the response to it. You know, I I had sent a text just noting that it was the day that the Lord had made for Thanksgiving and saying things like there's much to turn our focus and give Thanksgiving for today, our salvation, our family, for those families in Maui and the Middle East, for children, spiritual and otherwise, for new beginnings. And so really like just helping to refocus people's perspective and guys, the number of texts that I got from people who were like, hey, thank you. Like, I really needed to hear. I needed to be refocused in this way. And I would say, like, all the scripture memorization, all the various things that people have been doing, all the studies, pause and say, hey, Lord, what do you want me to say to those around me? And there's a lot of receptivity right now, especially this time of year, even to hear scripture. I mean, I'm sending things to people that aren't believers who are responding back to me and saying, thank you for that good word. I needed that positivity today. Why why do you think that is, David? The time of the year comes and more people go to church, more people are responsive, like you said. Is there anything behind that, you think? Yeah, you know, we used to talk about uh, Christers, Christmas and Easter, Mm -hmm. like people would attend there, and Mm -hmm. sometimes for family, or sometimes, you know, some would feel obligatory, or some would feel, you know, a a drawing to the season, both, you know, sometimes commercial and Hallmark, and sometimes God was drawing them, and there was just even a spiritual sensitivity. Uh, This is definitely a time, all the time is a great time to talk about Jesus, you know? Yeah. First, First Peter three fifteen, 
always be ready to give a reason for the hope that you have, but do it with gentleness and respect. There's just other times of the year where um, people maybe are in a mindset of wondering and curious. Um, So praying that people don't fall into the curse of familiarity, but that God would do a fresh thing in people's hearts. Mm. So good. You know, when you use text to let people know that you're not only thinking about them, but praying for them. I wonder if you ever do this, because I've been doing this more and more recently. Instead of uh, sending a text saying that I'm praying for you, I will type the prayer out in the text. Yeah. And send them the prayer. This is what I'm praying for you right now. These are the words I'm praying. And I, I always think that's a, a, a lovely way to say, not only am I praying for you, but here's the prayer that I am praying. Yeah. And I mean, like the medium and the various ways that you can do it, because even with SMS, you can send a video text, you that's know, true. and there's times where like, I've sent a text to my daughter, Taylor, and just saying, you know, hey, princess, dad is praying for you. I love you. And, you know, I'll send that to our to the family, and I'll send it to friends, you know, like like what you were saying earlier, maybe people hearing voices, and mm-hmm. as you're saying, seeing faces. So sometimes people will read a text really quick. Sometimes people actually pause and watch a video, yeah. or they'll read a longer text. But Bill, I love what you're saying there, because there's a personalization that comes with the prayer in the text that you're sending. Mm-hmm. Now, Wyatt, when, when you talk about your generation, of course, this is everybody right now, but... Uh, since COVID, we, we do Zoom everything and we do teleconferencing. You even sometimes now teleconference with your doctor. Um, do you think that there's some Zoom fatigue and teleconferencing fatigue? What, what do you mean by fatigue, I guess? Well, it's, it's sometimes a little tiring being uh, on the Brady Bunch screen all the time. Yeah. Just no. looking at, at people and you're, you're in a, a context where you're trying to be friendly and relational, but you're still on a computer screen with a bunch of other people. I feel that way personally. Now, okay. I think I, I think a lot of people have gotten so used to it and comfortable with it that it's the new normal for them, right? And, and they're more than okay going about their business that way. There's still a lot of people that do conduct business that way. And, you know, I, I don't think we're ever going back to the way things used to be. I'll, I'll just put it that way. <laughs> I think you're right. David Miles, let's uh, let's do some more brainstorming as to how we can use text messages um, in a productive, positive way. Well, you know, I'll take one just to kind of be, you know, vulnerable and just kind of open about like there's ways that we can encourage one another why it's today or to esteem one another. And uh, I sent this one like my my son Jackson had put together a family chat. So we have like the official family group chat. And it's so sweet because we can drop things in there. And, you know, for Thanksgiving, like, you know, again, Jesus is cool, not me. Because I can only say these things because of Jesus. But I just said a note. I said, hey, fam, dad's straight up in love with your mom. She's an amazing gift for which we can give Thanksgiving to God for. And I know my daughter would be like, ugh, dad, why are you doing that? So I put, and dad's only obeying the word of God saying this about his queen because Proverbs 31, 18. 28 says, her children rise up and call her happy, her husband too, and he praises her. So in that moment, it's like taking a moment just to disciple in the word, to say like, here's the reason why I'm encouraging. And this is actually what the word of God says, to encourage. Mm -hmm. And so like, those are things um, that we can send to people. We can, you know, send things like, um, you know, brothers, I do not consider that I've made it my own. One thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, straining forward to what lies ahead, I press towards the goal of the price of the upward call of God and Christ Jesus. And just encouraging people, along with the cultural mandate, to have a blessed and creative new day. Mm. So there's just, I think the, the, the opportunities are, they're endless. It's, it's, it's as much as our creativity and the and the things that God sets on your heart to say to someone. Oh, that's just it. I'm glad you said that because I got to give my wife a lot of credit. She's great at that. When she has something on her heart, she'll just text somebody, whoever it may be, whether it's her grandma, a friend she knows, and she'll just say, hey, God wanted me to reach out. 
and just ask how you're doing or encourage you or, or she'll send a Bible verse or something. And you'd be just amazed at the responses that she gets back to that. So <laughs> if God is putting something on your heart, take that step and reach out to somebody. You'd be amazing at the interaction that will follow. Yeah. Are either of you guys very nostalgic? A little bit. Why you're you're on the younger side, but uh, David, are you nostalgic? Because you know another, yeah. another, fun, another fun thing to do with an old friend is to send a text that says, "I was thinking of you, and I remembered when." Mm-hmm. And you can jar an old memory that is mm-hmm. kind of a, a, a totally feel good memory, and all of a sudden you've got something that just kind of uh, lights up in someone's mind, and that's a nice warm fuzzy. Here's here's another fun one, Bill. Like when you meet people. And, like, I met someone recently, and we realized that we knew the same person. So you flip the phone around, take a selfie of the two of you together, send the text to that other person that you both know and one another. And I've seen it where people are like, I have not seen this person for years. (laughs) And then you find out they get together for lunch, and it's like, that's so cool. Yeah, I love small world stories like that. Let's take a little break. You're listening to the Monday Afternoon Mix, Pastor David Miles and Wyatt M. We're talking about being positive and trying to use the technology like a text message to let somebody know how much you care about them, you're thinking of them, you love them, and how good a little bit of positivity will go such a long way. We'll be right back. Hi there and welcome. If you are a new listener, we want to officially welcome you with a free welcome packet gift. Request yours today at MyFaithRadio.com. Welcome to the show. It's time for the Monday Afternoon Mix with Pastor David Miles and Wyatt M. And I want you both to know that I'm grateful for the time and effort that you always devote to the Monday afternoon mix. You both are prayerful and thoughtful, and you always bring great ideas and wonderful content. And today is no exception as we talk about positivity and how to use technology to make a difference in the life of someone. David, I think right during the break, you were sharing about a text that you had shared. And if you would share about the timeliness of that, and you had no idea you were going to be so timely. You know, I honestly didn't. I had sent someone a text over the weekend Um, And I was just going along, and I just said, the Lord brought you to mind right now, and I'm praying for you. I hope this finds you well and looking forward to connecting again. And the person responded within the hour and said, David, I appreciate that so much. When you texted, I was getting out of a conversation that was kind of rough, and I was having some really big emotions after talking about this subject with the person. I was praying and processing that with the Lord. Just saw your text now and so appreciate your prayers. Mm. Mm. Powerful. Boy, is that nice? That is. It's really cool. And it's it's confirming, guys, to our faith. Like, we're blessing people, but how cool it is when we listen to the Lord and we pause and we do something, and you realize, like, for some people, it's a cup of cold water. For some people, it's like a lifeline. Mm, and, it's, and you're like, wow, Lord, help me to listen more to you. David, why is it safe to say that whenever you send out a text or an email or a voicemail or a video chat message that you are 99% almost certain that this is going to land in a very positive way because you're just simply showing your love to someone you care about. And you've taken the time in your busy day to reach out and say, thinking about you, care about you, love you. Yeah, I would say like the, the positive ones more than likely can land well because like what you and Patrick were talking about in the last segment, there's just so much negativity. I mean, there really, there really is so much negativity that these little, um, you know, these little words of encouragement, like it says in first Thessalonians chapter five, 11 about just encouraging people and just coming alongside them. They are, they're huge. Now, sometimes there's a, there's a, a, a caution or a concern that the Lord just puts on your heart and you within humility and in the right context and right relationship, you know, texting someone and saying like, I'm concerned about this, you know, and I'm praying for you. And 
I'm concerned of the steps that you're making, and I need to love you enough to say that. Yeah. And sometimes those ones might not be received well. I get it. And sometimes people, they may never come back, and some people may come back and say, you know what, that word that you gave me, you had no idea what I was about to get myself into, and it made me step away from that situation. Oh, the key mm-hmm. word I think you used there, David, was prayer. If you have the right motive behind what you're going to send to somebody, even if it's something they might not want to receive or take well, if you take it to prayer and you think and meditate on it before just sending it and you give it to God, then I think more times than not, it will be well received, like you said, as long as you're doing it for the right reasons and take it to prayer beforehand. Yeah. I had a, a prayer accountability brother, and there was a number of things I'd been working on, and he found, he said something like, dude, like you need to like focus on this one of these things right now. But what was cool about it is he then called me the next day and he said, you know what, I gave you that word, but I also didn't actually help you with a strategy. So then we scheduled a time and got together and did a strategy, a prayerful strategy around a particular thing. But he was like, he was saying like, look, I love you and there's there's too much on the plate right now and you Mm -hmm. got to pick one of these and lock Mm -hmm. in. And he was in step with Tammy who had said the same thing to me, so... You know, I would love to do a, an hour or a, a, a show that we do coming up soon about the power of words and how words have been instrumental in changing the trajectory of somebody's life. I bet if we just ask listeners to chime in, there would be some amazing stories. Just, I mean, got a nice text from someone driving home um, saying, this is, I just want to send you a note. I recently returned home from a deployment to the Middle East where I was able to listen to Faith Radio via the app. Uh, But I just wanted to say how wonderful it is to simply turn the radio on during my commute home and from work and hear your voices. Thank you for all you do, and God bless. Mm. Wow. God bless. Does that make your month? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And and, and again, we're we're prayerful. And I guess if we could say thank you to our listening family, and if you do happen to think about Faith Radio and about our our listening, our music site, KTIS and others, pray. Like we really covet your prayers for godly wisdom to be listening to the Holy Spirit, to be encouraging in the ways that God wants us to and allowing him to connect, knowing that his word does not return void. Mm -hmm. We want to lead people to Christ here at Faith Radio and nurture people in their spiritual journey through Christ-centered media. We want speakers and teaching and everything else to be rock solid so you feel equipped that we're almost helping to disciple you along the way. But we also long and pray for that person that is stumbling upon Faith Radio. Um, The Spirit has obviously led them, but they're outside of the family of God and through the the talk and the teaching, they want to place their faith and trust in Jesus Christ as a first-time believer. So we pray for that as well, all the time. Yeah. And, you know, a neat thing, Bill, as being a pastor and having conversations with people, the number of times that I've had people say that it was someone that they worked with or a manager, and there was something different about that person that really just kind of stirred their heart or, or a worker. And, um, there was a thing on words of encouragement for the uh, Canada Indeed dot com, and because we spend so much work time at work, <clears throat> here was an encouraging word for colleagues. Just a couple. I'm grateful for the time and effort you devote to your work. Your performance has been outstanding. You should be proud of yourself. I know times are difficult right now. We appreciate the dedication and hard work that you have shown. Um, and then there's all sorts of like encouraging quotes, you know, C.S. Lewis's hardships often prepare ordinary people for an extraordinary destiny. And so there's just different um, words to instill confidence. You're doing awesome. This is what you're going through, not who you are. And so just different things um, that God can lay on our hearts just to be able to bless other people. Mm. We all love encouragement and affirmation, and I know when when it, some of it lands here at the station on behalf of a show or what the kind of work we're doing here, it just means the world to us. So thank you very much. And David and Wyatt, thank you uh, again for the Monday afternoon mix. I look forward to uh, more times ahead. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Bill. You bet. 
After a break, we've got our two just ahead, Ken Samples, who's not only a philosopher but a theologian. He's going to talk about how did the human mind come to be. That's next. Thanks for listening. Programming like this is made available through your support. Information available at MyFaithRadio.com.